USA versus England. It's the She Believes Cup, and it's presented by AT&T here on FS1. This is one of two games tonight played in Tampa. In the first game, World Cup rivals Germany and France met. This is what Germany does well. Set pieces off the corner kick. The French don't clear well. Meyer would make them pay. It's the only goal of the game. And the Germans come away with a one to nothing victory over France in the opening game of the tournament. So they have the early lead. Three points for that win. Of course, the USA or England can change those standings after this. Welcome, everyone, to our coverage here on FS1 alongside Ali Wagner. I'm JP Della Camera. So many great veterans to talk about on this US team. But lately, the talk is about a young phenom. Well, that's Mallory as she has a remarkable ability to separate from the opponent. But what sets her apart is her awareness, her savviness on the field. She pops up into certain little gaps and spaces, receives the ball, is able to solve pressure, and perhaps most importantly, gets her... One of their veterans, Jody Taylor. Well, Jody Taylor is a player that the world didn't get to see at her best in the World Cup because she was injured. But she's back, and if there's one player that can pull apart the U.S. back line, it is Jody Taylor. She's savvy, she's smart, and she played at Oregon State University, plays for the Thorns, so she has adapted that American mentality. Let's check out the starting lineups first for the USA. Hope Solo back in goal. And look at that back line, number 15, Emily Sonic, getting her chance to prove she can pair next to Becky Sauerbrunn. And in the midfield, the partnership between Lindsey Horan and Morgan Bryant is going to be so important tonight against a top five team. And then up top, usual suspects, Carly Lloyd, Alex Morgan, slicing and dicing as they do. For England in their starting lineup, their number one goalkeeper in the World Cup returns, Karen Bardsley. And in the back line, a new face for England as well. Jilly Flaherty is going to get a chance to prove she belongs there to Sampson. And in the midfield, it is number four, Farrah Williams, who is the maestro, who pulls the string for this team and sets the tempo. And then up top, we talked about already, Jody Taylor. She makes great runs in behind, and she's going to have to do that today if they want to wreak havoc on this U.S. defense. Let's go downstairs where moments ago Jenny Taft caught up with co-captain Becky Sauerbrunn. Becky, in your last match, of course, the championship game of Olympic qualifying, you hit 100 caps. Congratulations. And when you think back to 2008, your first cap, what are your favorite moments that kind of stand out from along the way? It's been a long journey, and I've had some amazing moments. And it's funny, you know, the first cap feels so long ago, but at the same time, not that long ago. Um, it's funny, it was against Canada, and then my 50th was against Canada, and my 100th was against Canada. So really, uh, Canada really sticks out in my mind. But really, it's been... I've been so honored and fortunate to be on this team for that long and you know hopefully I'll have many more caps to go. This tournament showcases for the five top ranked teams in the world. How important is it for you and the entire team to come out strong and really show what U.S. soccer is all about? Well, it's great because Olympic qualifying was so results oriented and this is more perform performance oriented. So it's great to test against the best teams in the world and kind of find areas that were a little weakened, things that we need to improve before Rio. So it's great to have the best to, to do that against. Becky, thanks so much. Good luck. Thank you so much. Four of the top five teams in the world are involved in this She Believes Cup tournament. Come back with us. We'll see two of them, USA, England. Come on. Anticipation. Focus. Execution. That's what I'm building with chocolate milk. Nutrients to refuel, protein to rebuild, backed by science. This is your moment. Seize it. Now during the Hyundai Seize the Moment sales event. Hurry in and get 0% APR for up to 60 months, plus $1,000 event cash or $1,500 customer event cash on the 2016 Sonata. Some of the biggest names in college basketball will battle for the crown. The Big East Tournament begins Wednesday at 6.30 Eastern on FS1. Eastwood has been helping do-it-yourselfers, guys like you who restore and customize their vehicles since 1978. We have over 4,000 products that help you do the job right, like our full line of welders, paint, high-performance radiators, and more, plus expert advice when you need it. With up to a three-year warranty on our products, including welders, you can trust the Eastwood name for all your automotive projects. Visit Eastwood.com today and use the coupon code Eastwood for 10% off your order.
Men over 40, you could be losing the benefits of free testosterone, which could mean you're missing out on passion, performance, and drive. So I'm going to test your manhood by asking you three simple questions. Do you want more passion? Would you like improved performance? How about a stronger libido? Well, if you answered yes to any of these questions, go to trynugenics.com now and enter the promo code below to receive a complimentary bottle of Nugenics. Nugenics is a powerful man-boosting breakthrough energized with testosterone the patented key ingredient to help boost free testosterone levels. Nugenics and its clinically researched combination of natural ingredients can help you enjoy more passion, improved performance, and a stronger libido, too. So now it's your turn to put Nugenics to the test. Nugenics samples are not available in stores. You can only get your complimentary bottle by going to trynugenics.com and entering the promo code below. Trynugenics.com. That's trynugenics.com. You make me train long. Cross to the back post. There's the moment. Abby Wamba. You make me try harder. You make me dream bigger. And when something's in my way, you make me push through it. It's a save by Hudson. Tip in the room for the United States. Get Alex Morgan. Lloyd. Pills it around the wall and into the back of the net. You make me see the person I want to be. Welcome back, everyone, to our coverage here on FS1, the She Believes Cup Tournament, presented by AT&T. Welcome back to Tampa. No one knows what to expect from this England team. Will they come out? Will they bunker like some of the teams did in the CONCACAF Olympic qualifying tournament? Or will England come out to play? They've not had a meaningful game since late November, so there might be some rust. We'll see as the two teams enter the field here at Raymond James Stadium. Team of the United States versus the national team of England in the first round of the She Believes Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats and welcome retired U.S. Air Force Technical Sergeant Sonia Bryson in the singing of God Save the Queen. God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen, God save the Queen. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming had the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in our game 
It's the USA versus England. They will meet for the 13th time. The last time they met was February of 2015. Come back with us for the kick. Dad, you could just drop me off right here. No, no, I'll take you up to the front of the school. That's where your friends are. Seriously, it's, it's really fine. You don't want to be seen with your dad? No, it's... Is this about a boy? Dad, stop, please. Oh, there's Tracy. <laughs> Bye, Dad. It breaks when you don't. Forward collision warning and autonomous emergency braking available on the newly redesigned Passat from Volkswagen. Tonight at 1.30 on TMZ Sports, Johnny Manziel's big Vegas plans. The QB is all set to head to Sin City, along with Leonardo DiCaprio and the guys from One Direction, and we're going to tell you why. It's good to be single, man. TMZ Sports, tonight at 1.30 on FS1. I know I might seem a bit cuggy, but I'm just being myself. That's the best way for anyone to be. Like me. people are still needlessly suffering with joint discomfort. So we're taking joint relief to a whole new level by giving away a million complimentary two-week samples of all new fast-acting InstaFlex Advanced. The advanced formula that takes joint relief to a whole new level. We took the number one top-selling joint formula at GNC and supercharged it with powerful key ingredients that work so fast, all you need is just one tiny pill a day to start feeling relief in just one week. Now we're giving away a million complimentary samples. Go to tryinstaflex.com and enter the promo code below. InstaFlex Advanced is not only incredibly fast, it's it's also twice as effective as other products using old-fashioned glucosamine plus chondroitin. It helps increase your mobility and flexibility, too. We're giving away a million complimentary samples to help people experience a whole new advanced level of relief. Complimentary samples are not available in any store. To guarantee yours, go to tryinstaflex.com and enter the promo code below. That's tryinstaflex.com. We're raising money for our pet rescue. We're raising awareness. I'm boosting spirits with t-shirts. Booster.com is the easy way for you or your group to raise money for any cause. Perfect for PTAs, charity walks, personal fundraisers, causes big and small by selling t-shirts and collecting donations online. Just design your t-shirt and drive everyone to your personalized booster page. We'll ship the orders and send you the money you raised. Visit booster.com and start your free campaign today. Welcome back, everyone, to our coverage. Hope Solo in the United States getting ready to take on England, USA with a lopsided edge in the long-time rivalry. For the midfield pairing, which could be key tonight, that's Morgan Bryan and Lindsey Horan. More on that downstairs to Jenny Taft. Well, JP, Jill Ellis made very clear that she's going to be watching that pairing very carefully between Morgan Bryan and Lindsey Horan. And I had a chance to talk to both of them about playing together, and they both praise the simplicity of playing together. Now, Bryan told me that they have the same soccer brain. They think the same, and they're not afraid to be aggressive. Horan told me that Morgan Bryan has been instrumental in her ability to readapt to playing that American style. And today, they just mesh well together, and they're looking to do it against a more challenging opponent. Thank you, Jenny. We'll keep our eyes on that duel in the midfield. A big test for them against quality opposition. USA in white, England in red underway. Hugh immediately was on the ball, trying to make something happen. Ball is played to the sideline by Lloyd to Mallory Pugh. She'll cut it across, and Bardsley has to stop that. So right away, Mallory Pugh going at a defender. She loves doing that in the attacking third. And they said it right from the kickoff. That's something they had planned, but she kept her run going, which I like to see out of her, and that's what allowed her to get into that space. Pugh makes her 14th straight start. She's only 17 years old. England will try to push it ahead for Taylor. And that's cut off by the U.S. Haran played it forward to Bryan. Shipped ahead at the halfway line. U.S. looking for some possession here. They had no idea how England would come out tonight. Would they bunker? Would they go right after them? We're and finding out. And Jill Ellis called them a bit of a chameleon-like team because in the World Cup, they really were the only team to come out in different formations with different personnel, with different tactics in almost every game. She had a feeling they were going to high pressure, and early on, that looks to be the case. 
Throwing from the far side of the field for the USA. It's Morgan back and doing what she does best, making those runs and scoring goals. And that's so important for this U.S. side because they weren't getting a lot of production out of that front line in the World Cup. Horan to the outside. Kelly O'Hara, she too making her fourth straight start. Her and Mallory Pugh together. Horan looking long, and that's too far for O'Hara, who still applauded the service. At least the idea of it. Mark Sampson's done a great job with this England team. They were seconds away from possibly playing in the final against the United States. Had things gone their way, the own goal off Bassett, which the whole nation saw. But then the next day they came back. The next game beat Germany in the third place game. So he did well. He did, and and what you saw from the group was what a collective belief. These this team believed in each other, and they got tighter as the tournament progressed. They gained confidence. And that is one of the things he's looking for tonight, is for that team to continue building on that confidence that they can play against the top teams in the world. Jill Ellis on the opposite side, FIFA World Coach of the Year on the women's side. Knows that this is gonna be a much different tournament than certainly CONCACAF was, but they're looking forward to this because these are the games, these are the tournaments where you really see what the players have. Going back the other way. England on the attack on the left side. They'll try it. Greenwood, the cross into the box. Settled there off the chest. Played out by Taylor. Then the quick shot is blocked. And now outside of the box for Greenwood. Off a deflection. The U.S. should be able to clear that, and they do. It was Demi Stokes that made that attempt. Well, we got the feeling when we talked to Jill Ellis yesterday that the reins have been taken off a bit since her World Cup win, and now the group is focusing on, as she says, a new style of play. And it's funny to me because I thought the U.S. has been trying to possess over all these years, but now they're committed to it, and I think they have the personnel finally to be able to execute upon that, and she's giving them the license to make mistakes so they can, in fact, go to that next level. She uses the phrase, problem solved on the field. England's come out strong in the opening. Remember, they've not played since the end of November in terms of a competitive game, and he's only had, Samson, that is, the team together for a couple of weeks. Greenwood. Out of play, throw in here. Again, it's Alex Greenwood, one of 19 players on this roster that were involved in that World Cup. Stokes pushing it into the box for Duggan. Never got there. U.S. able to clear, but they're under some pressure here. They didn't see this the entire CONCACAF Olympic qualifying tournament. They saw nothing like this. I, I, I'm not surprised at all, though. This English team is a good quality side, and they didn't get to that bronze medal match by default. They earned it. And having only been together for two weeks, the question is going to be, can they sustain this level of pressure? And usually when teams are fit, they can't. So considering they're in preseason mode, time will tell. Held up now by the U.S. Sonnet will push it across. She and Sauerbrunn, the two paired together centrally tonight. Sonnet is in the spot where Julie Johnston normally plays. Heath. Moving it ahead. Left there for Tobin Heath, who's really picked up her level of play the last several games. Could even go back to the last World Cup for that. Scott pass ahead. Push to the outside. Taylor going after it on the flank. Able to keep it in play. And then that numbers forward, and they're going to earn their first corner. And that's just a good transition attack from England. Mark Sampson said, we don't play different than other English teams typically. We keep it tight, and we look to be aggressive in our transition, and that was a perfect example. Let's see what England comes up with on this corner kick. Some big targets in that box. Greenwood is going to take this. Steph Houghton is typically one of the targets. Obviously, Jill Scott with her height.
laid in. Tough clearance out from the U.S. Duncan will get it into the middle. Williams thought she had help closer. She does not. Mallory Pugh puts it into another gear, and that's a game-changing save there on that tackle for England. Otherwise, Pugh is off to the races with about 40 or 50 yards to spare. Jill Ellis talked about her yesterday, her ability to separate from defenders. Well, that was a clean, clean look at it. For all the U.S. fans, she is something to be excited about. I mentioned it in the open that she has a savviness on the ball. She's comfortable out there, coupled with that pace, and she's only 17. Other countries have to be fearful of what type of player she can become. Jill said yesterday she does not play at all like a 17-year-old. That could be a huge understatement. Here's Morgan Bryan. Short ball ahead. Bryan will get it back on that far side. Flag stayed down. Bryan works it back to Horan. Under some pressure now from England. Horan from distance. Intercepted. England will try to counter. One of the things that Mark Sampson told us yesterday, they would try to limit the USA in terms of their counters and try to disrupt the play of the U.S. And here's a look at just that breakaway speed from Pew. She touches along a bit too heavy, but she leaves that first defender in the dust. Terrific young player getting a chance to start against England in what is really a meaningful game for her. That was Duggan. And the foul goes against O'Hara. So it's pressure, it's being physical. It's a lot of things that England have going for them tonight against the U.S. Well, if I was an opposing coach, I would do exactly what Samson's doing. I would press the U.S. time and time again. Teams are typically fearful they sit back, but I do think the U.S., historically speaking, has struggled under that pressure. And, and that's what Jill Ellis is looking to rectify. She wants them to get numbers collapsing offensively so they can get players around the ball to relieve that pressure. And that's just not happening this in this early stage of the game. Duggan tried to find Taylor. That's cut off. Tobin Heath, there's that pressure again. Some good support, too, defensively from England. It's not one player chasing. Everyone's following. You're right. That As that ball went into her hand, three players collapsed on her. And if the first defender doesn't win it, the second. So that's a silly foul by England to commit there because they had numbers to win that and transition the other way. Sonnet push it across to Sauerbrunn. She and Carly Lloyd, the co-captains. When they're out there together, it's Lloyd wearing the armband. Off of Q. Ball is lost out. Klingenberg was over there in that far sideline. And we talk about the partnership of Haran and Brian being so crucial today and in their development, but look at the flanks as well. Klingenberg and Pugh, that relationship has to continue to grow. On the flip side, Tobin Heath with O'Hara. These outside backs at their outside mids, they need to combine to get down the flanks and serve the box. That's something that Jill Ellis has been hammering in their heads time and time again. Throwing finally for England. Lucy Bronze will take it. Won a title at the University of North Carolina years back. Just trying to get possession immediately. A couple of defenders in red right after them. Taylor goes after that ball. It's going to be cleared away. Sonnet to O'Hara. England will win that one. Too far for Scott. Scott will end up with the ball, though. Pushing it forward off Taylor. Farrow Williams. Oh, that was a nice touch on the ball. Lost it there. But it's cleared forward by Houghton. Too long on the Houghton pass. This week, MLS Soccer Sunday returns. The 2016 season is back on FS1, featuring two of the league's top teams, Clint Dempsey and the Sounders, taking on Graham Zussi and Sporting Kansas City. Coverage starts 7 Eastern, only on FS1, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go.
Moran trying to force her way through. Greenwood on the ball for Ingram. Knocked out of play. Ingram's ball in front of their bench. And Mark Sampson with some encouraging words there on the side for Greenwood. And this pressure is something that the U.S. hasn't seen lately, but they're going to settle in. This one is wide of Hope Solo. Jenny Tafter in a good spot to hear what's going on on the sideline. What are you hearing from Coach Sampson? Well, JP, he has been very vocal from the very beginning of this match. He's been saying, we need to keep pressing. We need to keep playing them tight. He was yelling at Jody Taylor, Taylor you have to take every shot that you get. He doesn't want them to let up at all. And he was upset about that foul call. He wants them to be aggressive. And as Demi Stokes said to us yesterday, you don't play the U.S. when you think you're going to lose. You come in, you're ready to play them, and that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, you have to be. Here's Pugh on the attack. Left, head off, the cross inside. Deflected wide. Now, Morgan had a great chance, but one thing about Pugh, when she makes that run, the head is always up. And again, I mean, just picks up that loose ball. That's something that's so important. But this touch, she just can blow by these players and she's carrying the ball that is so difficult Lucy Bronze is a fast player and then to send a perfect ball in and pick out Alex Morgan that's the savviness I'm talking about she's connecting in that final third and that is something that Jill Ellis wants to see from this group continue to improve final third connection final third output score goals when you get the chances ball was cleared out of play by England it's a USA throw in O'Hara was going to throw in towards the back, but saw that move was covered. England will take over again. Duggan, left side, has Stokes on a run with her, will push it back instead. Jordan Nobbs to the middle, Farrell Williams, number four in red for England, holding there. Greenwood. Try to launch that, blocked by Heath. Stokes. And for his stop play, Tatiana Guzman from Nicaragua has got a foul. Free kick coming up for England. And that was a nice, nice, patient attack from England, except Alex Greenwood at the last minute decides to lump that in. They're fortunate here to earn a free kick. And this, this range is very, very good for Steph Howland. You can get this up and over the wall and dip it down under that bar. At 30 or so yards away. The U.S. hasn't conceded a goal yet in 2016 after six games. Howden is ready for this. Right off the wall. England will recover. Knobs try to launch that one. Edge of the box cleared out. Flag was up on the far side. wasn't tested in the last tournament. She can expect to be tested in this one with games against France and Germany coming up. Those numbers are daunting for the U.S. Not just not conceding a goal, but all the goals that they have scored as well. The Mexico game was the only close game, really, in that tournament. Moy. Taken down. Knobs blocked. Hera into the middle for Bryan. Lloyd was taken down, yes, but again, there was three English defenders collapsing on her. She's glad to be playing in this game. She told us yesterday she did not enjoy the Olympic <laughs> qualifying tournament with 10 players playing behind the ball. And she was also very critical of herself, talking about how many missed chances she had. I, I know that was so surprising yeah. to me, but it speaks to her drive. I mean, she said, I've got to keep climbing. I've got to keep climbing. And she scored four goals in qualifying. Yeah. Squid in every so game not, but one. It, right. It's not as though she doesn't have output, but she expects better of herself, and, and that's why she's World Player of the Year. O'Hara. Back for Solo. And that ball is just launched out of play here in the 17th minute. 
scoreless, and that's not really the surprise, but probably the surprise is how well I think England has played. I think so. Uh, uh, coupled with their pressure, they've been keeping the ball. And, you know, when you look at teams of the, of the past, that hasn't been their strong suit, but they look very comfortable, very confident. Scott getting the return. Jill Scott will push it wide. Into the box it comes, cleared out. And now it's Pew. That time it wasn't on, so she was more comfortable playing it back and settling it. it that's the decision making that I'm talking about. For a 17 year old who has such pace, she's wise beyond her years because oftentimes people force those situations. But she gets it. England tried to keep that one in. Could not. You've seen a lot of great players come up through the U.S. ranks. Does she remind you of, of anyone at that age at 17? Well, she's in her own caliber. It's good. It's great it's if you're a compliment. U.S. fan. Yeah, it's terrible. Quite a compliment. If you're anyone but an American. He will push it out to Klingenberg. Going long. Pushed across. Stuck easily by Bardsley. And, and what sets her apart, again, is she has the pace, she has the athleticism, but she has a high soccer IQ. She can assess what the game is asking of her and, and implement it when needed. So I am just completely impressed with how she's started in these last four matches. Heath on the ball. Slowed down by Stokes, and Stokes had help behind her as well. England very well organized at the start of this game. It's a good test for the U.S. Figure out how to break down this wall. Intercepted. That was not the way. Not from the U.S. standpoint. And as soon as they took it over, five players went forward for England. And now they find the open Scott. A better pass, and they might have been able to go forward. Bronze up for Taylor. Klingenberg. There's that relentless pressure from Taylor. USA's ball. But it's not an easy first 18 plus minutes for the US. Jill Ellis said she hopes her team gets exposed. And I don't think they're necessarily being exposed, but they are being put to the test. And this is this tournament, these games, this is all about learning about her team about the partnerships, about the individuals, what they can perform at this level, giving some players experience, but collectively, how do they problem solve on the fly in the flow of the game? Long for Morgan, Barsley's out, got it. Maybe Morgan got a piece of her as well. She did. Foul is called and Barsley stays down. She's been their starter at the last two World Cups, very durable player. But what a ball in by O'Hara. And that's the little slip run that Alex Morgan is so nuanced with. And Bardsley, I mean, that's what you have to do if you're an opposing goalkeeper playing against the United States. You have to be off your line, ready for those balls in behind. And just driving into that space is O'Hara, and she clips it over the back line, right in the perfect gap where Alex Morgan would have gone on to it had Bardsley not come out for it. That angle showed a little bit better that there was a collision with Bardsley, but but she's okay. From California, Santa Monica, went to school at Cal State Fullerton, plays for Manchester City. They do have some familiarity though on this team, Allie, and that seven players play for Man City, seven also play for Chelsea, but their season doesn't start till March. They finished in October. Cohesive this group can be when they're played in, but that's a huge asset for Mark Sampson. Bardsley, her parents are English, and that's why she is eligible to play for England. <laughs> and her dad, when she was five years old and was asked to play soccer, her dad said, girls don't play soccer. I, dad, think, dad I, think, was I wrong. think girls might play soccer. Yeah, dad was wrong. <laughs> Dads can be wrong. Mallory Pugh tracking that ball down, finding Klingenberg. Sauerbrunn. There's that pressure again from England, forcing the turnover. Duggan with it, waits for some help, holds it nicely in the box until the help gets there. 
Penn. They couldn't find Scott, who was open. Knobs pushing it out wide, knocked inside, and it's not just defensively where England is looking pretty sharp, but when they have the ball too. Right, they're they're making good decisions. They're being patient, but they jump on this errant pass, and look at Becky Sauerbrunn. Yes. England doesn't make the best of it, but Becky Sauerbrunn does what she has to do and stands her up, buys time for her defenders to come in and recover and clean up that mistake. 100th cap for Sauerbrunn in the last game against Canada. In that Olympic qualifying final. USA and Canada had already qualified for the Olympics because of wins in the semifinals. They still have that final game to be played. Heath. Blocked Greenwood, kept it in play. Greenwood's bending ball inside is redirected away. Knobs for Greenwood. Blocked out by Tobin Heath. Still belongs to England in the 23rd minute. And Tobin Heath lost that ball because her teammates weren't coming in at angles to give her support. Greenwood plays for the club side. Liverpool got it in, and then the pass back to her. It didn't work. Throw in U.S. Harrow will take it. She was a starter, played every minute in the Olympics in London in 2012. Looking to see if she can do the same in the next Olympic tournament in Brazil. And the U.S. has these throw-ins right now. But England has numbers, more numbers around the ball than the U.S. does. If someone on the team has got to want the ball, that's got to be your center midfielders. Morgan Bryan ran, getting themselves open, beginning to loosen things up because England is way over condensing. They're way, they're past the vertical mid stripe, and they've got to change the point of attack and loosen up this English team. Greenwood is a player in need of some attention. So the training staff is out on the field in the 24th minute. Scoreless between the USA and England. First game of the tournament played earlier tonight. Germany on a goal by Meyer up of a corner kick. That was the only goal. Germany over France one to nothing. So temporarily at least Germany is on top of the she believes cup tournament standings. And for France you know we got to see a bit of that game. That goal was against the run of play. And that's something they as a program have to figure out because a lot of times they're dominating matches but not coming out the victor. Obviously, we hope that Greenwood's okay, but I'm wondering if this is a good time for Samson to get everybody together. They're playing so well that you would think maybe it's a bad time, but, but maybe not, considering they've not had that much time together. It's a good time for Samson to encourage them to continue doing the same. It's a great time for the U.S. to say, listen, here's our opportunity to problem solve. What are you sensing? And it's got to be the center mids. It's got to be the players in the center of the park saying we need to get the ball we need to switch the point of attack because England is like I said over condensing past vertical middle. Greenwood appears to be okay after this collision. And you just see it it's two players it looks like Alex Morgan backing up into Greenwood and they just get tangled up. Klingenberg chases this loose ball of the corner. Played it inside. Off Bryant. Sent the other way. Collected now by the U.S. and pushed wide to O'Hara. Greenwood back there doing that job defensively. Stokes now comes over to challenge O'Hara. Sonnet. Across the way. Sauerbrunn. There's no bunker from England tonight. They've been aggressive right from the get-go. And the question will be, can they sustain that pressure for 90 minutes? Karen Bartzi will put it back into play. So far, though, so good for England. from Bardsley as she'll send this one forward. Taylor was after it. It goes out of play. Ready for the England throw it. Now another 
throw in several yards farther upfield now. When you say so far, so good for England, their challenge now is putting it together in the final third. Williams has some help there with bronze on the side. And U.S. will take over. They were bailed off by that foul because they put themselves into trouble with that last pass. Competitive game here tonight, to say the very least, and that's the way it's been going in the last few meetings between these two clubs. The U.S. has had the better in terms of the record overall in the 12 games played, but lately these games are much closer. That one nothing game last February of 2015. Could have easily been a 1-1 game. Yeah. Video replay showed Jody Taylor was in fact onside on her goal. Bouncing all the way back. Solo is there at the edge of the box. We'll roll it ahead to try to help the offense. O'Hara, a long ball for the run of Morgan. Cut off there. Stokes on it. And I think those those stats really speak volumes about what Samson has been able to do as he's come in as the head coach. Because the FA wasn't giving them a lot of resources in 10 years ago, five years ago, and it shows you as you start to invest in your women's program, what can happen. This is this team is here to stay. US on the ball. One of the names we've not called out much has been Carly Lloyd. She came back that time to try to get the ball. So they've, they've sort of taken her out. How do the U.S. get Lloyd more involved? Well, they have to possess the ball to find her. They're not connecting four passes in a row in order for her to find a gap to slip into. Right now, they're just not breaking that initial wave of pressure from England. And until that happens, it's going to be hard to find Carly Lloyd, Alex Morgan up top. If you're Jill Ellis, do you want Lloyd to come back for the ball like she just did, or do you want to keep her up there? She has the license to roam to go wherever she wants. Ideally, you keep her up there, but if she's not seeing the ball, you want to get her on it. Long from Greenwood. Stokes is after it for England. The U.S. will collect Morgan Bryan. Pushing it back. Sonic holds up play. Right side, O'Hara. 30th minute, zeros on the scoreboard. USA, England. Game two of the She Believes Cup tournament. England are back in the ball quickly. They look for Stokes to the feet of Stokes. Had a step behind O'Hara, but O'Hara caught up to it. Greenwood, very active on that left side. Ball was lost out of play. It's going to be long to England. Taken away now by Tillman Heath. Immediately up for Morgan. The right side Heath. Heath is fouled by Greenwood. She's going to get the first yellow card of the day. There's some concern for Tobin Heath in that last challenge. Perhaps a bit of payback from Greenwood. If she just comes in here, that's a late challenge on Heath. Heath back up though and ready to go, so that's good news. Let's see Horan trying to switch it over to O'Hara. Needed to be quicker. That allowed England to get back and cover that. Heath on the side, looks for the help. It's coming. This Pew making that run. Way out it goes, and that's going to be wide of Barnsley in the shot from Horan. Thirty-second minute, zeros on the board. So well past the half-hour mark. How would you assess this? This is 
been a performance that has been dominated largely by England. Uh, neither team is having any success in that final third. It's mostly been played in the middle of the park. But I think England has to be happy with where they're sitting right now. The U.S., on the other hand, is looking at each other. They have to start to solve this. They have to ping it around. They have to change the point of attack and spread out this very, very tight, high-pressure defense from England. Held up now by Taylor on the back heel. Fancy, but Greenwood knew it was coming. Greenwood's cross inside right to Solo. This time a long punt from Solo. He's headed out of play to throw it. And that look by Solo isn't exactly on because Morgan was all by herself against two defenders, and there was no one running in behind if she intended to flick that. But this is what Coach Ellis wanted. She wanted her team to be tested. She wants them to commit to the style of play. And yes, there may be a few lumps, as she says, along the way. But for any U.S. fans out there that are worried that this isn't a dominating performance, this is how the team is going to build and get better. They have to try things. They have to commit to it. And they've got to figure out when to play out of pressure and when not to, because sometimes it's not a good idea. And she could have gone with more veterans tonight, but she chose to put Sada in and test her there and puke. Right, because part of this is player evaluation. Becky Sauerbrunn said it to Jenny Taft. This isn't about results, it's about the process. Lloyd tries to take off. Look at the chase after her. Pew, able to get there. You saw the defender bronze back off, respecting that speed. And it's knocked out of play, so Pew's making defenders think. <laughs> As soon as she blows by you in the first five minutes, you're going to back off and give yourself a little leeway. This ball almost looked to be an errant pass, but Pew makes it a good one as she gets on it. And then there's Bronze giving herself some, some time to turn and chase if Pew decides to go. Moran will get it back from Heath. It's pushed out wide to O'Hara. It's another tough pass. England could have been off and running on the counter. Those are dangerous balls. It's the right idea, but just not executed. Solo's probably seen more of the ball in this first half than she has in the last several games. You're exactly right, and, and she likes it that way, as long as it's not in the back of the net. She says sometimes she loses focus in, in games where she isn't tested, so she's going to be clued in today. She has games against Germany and France ahead of her in this tournament. If that is that Ellis decides not yeah. to put sure. a Nayer in or Harrison for some experience. Jill Scott settled it. England will push it towards Greenwood. 35th minute, still scoreless USA, England from Tampa. Heels for a handball in the box. And England does not get that call. And you can appeal as a player, but don't stop playing. Another foul against the U.S. Free kick coming up. And here's Sauerbrunn just backtracking, making sure Jody Taylor isn't going to beat her to that ball. And then just a little, little tap from her hand. She got away so with one saying. there. <laughs> It could have been, might have been, probably was. Definitely. Something like that. I'm pretty sure the video doesn't lie. <laughs> Free kick from long distance for England as Solo directs the team in front of her. Knobs. Designed for Greenwood, heads collide, two players down in the box. Both get up, thankfully. Klingenberg first one on it, now on this right side with Pew. And that's what you see a lot of, Pew being able to go from one side to the other. Heath having the license to change sides as well. But very well done by Heath to track Greenwood's run. 
I don't like that free kick from England, however. You have the ball on one side of the field. You can get that up and over the last line of defense and run onto it. Instead, they go centrally, and that's just a much more difficult ball to hit into the box and have anyone run onto it with any pace, with any chance to redirect it on frame. It's going to be too long for anyone in white for the USA. Comes back to goal to Bardsley. See if Klingenberg stays on this right side or if she moves back to the left. They may have changed that up tactically to try to find some other way to break this down, break down England. Ball is loose, deep in USA territory. Played up to Lloyd, pushed wide to the right for Heath. Well, that is interesting that they moved her over here if it stays that way because Klingenberg and Heath combined so well together. Initially, is on that left side in games all last year, beginning of this year, but they moved Heath to the right side because they wanted to have more balance, but maybe they thought their chemistry is so good they need to start getting some sparks out there. Coran leaves it off for Morgan Bryan. Golden ball winner is the most outstanding player in the Olympic qualifying tournament. Intercepted here by England Scott. That was a tug from behind. U.S. takes over. Lloyd for Morgan. Didn't work. Hugh tried to get to it. Instead, it's Bronx. These turnovers by the U.S., they're occurring because they're not getting numbers around the ball. That's why O'Hara gave away that ball. She had no help. She's running inside, and no one was within 10 yards of her. Heath between the benches. Brian, Horan, Sonnet for the U.S. Sauerbrunn. Jill Ellis wants them with problems solved on the field, but she also knows in this tournament you can make six subs. <laughs> so, second half, we could see some changes. Or Especially perhaps, if it stays like this. And perhaps she keeps it the same and says, I want you guys to figure this out. I want this group to make it right. She does have the luxury of six, though. She won't have that in the Olympics. Nor did she have it at the World Cup. Heath. Squaring it, Lloyd pushed it back. As soon as Lloyd touches the ball, somebody's on her. As soon as she runs away from that, somebody else is on her. I think someone got the memo. She's World Player of the Year. Yeah. I saw that FIFA television presentation. And she was up there with Messi. And Messi saying, I'm up here with Carly Lloyd. Yeah. I think, I think that was said, yeah, I think so. Free kick here for England. Usually, the other teams are filing the U.S. to slow them down. The U.S. has had their share of fouls in this one, too. Sometimes it's gamesmanship, sometimes it's frustration. A bit of both in this case, perhaps. This long ball for Taylor. He was well marked. Scott won that in the air. Last touch by England. It's a USA throw in. So we're down to the final five minutes now. First half, still scoreless USA England. And the US will have another throw in. So O'Hara started out as a right back. She's now on that left side with Pugh on that far wing. See if they can generate anything together on that side. With Klingenberg and Heath on the right. Klingenberg played the most minutes in the Olympic qualifiers for the U.S. It's knocked out of play by Greenwood. Mark Sams was just told by the fourth official to step a little further back. Maybe don't grab the players. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Trying to get through, could not take him down. Now he won it, then she went down. And the referee chooses to ignore both. 
Klingenberg pulling it back. So well done by Becky Sauerbrunn to bring that ball down out of the air and then connect after. I mean, it is surprising that she's been snubbed off of so many award lists because she just makes things look easy and maybe that's why she's overlooked. Hugh fighting to win it back. Gets it for the U.S. O'Hara. Brian over the top. If the flag stays down, no, it does not. Offside, Alex Morgan. Coming up after the break, which is happening very soon, we'll have all of your first half highlights and analysis, as well as the best from the Germany France game that was played earlier tonight here in Tampa. And here's where second ball is so important for both these teams. The captain of the team, Houghton, sending it long. Duggan is after it, couldn't get to it. Hugh, defended by Scott. Driven upfield. Lloyd towards Morgan. And then out of play went Morgan. Ball and Morgan out. But as soon as she made a run, we saw five England players scoring back in a formation defensively. They're just very disciplined. That's what they have to do if you do want to disrupt the rhythm of this U.S. team. But I like from Lloyd and Morgan when they are touching the ball, which is, has not been a hopped in this half, is they are combining. They're another partnership that has to continue to grow, and, and they've been combining well when they have seen the ball. Hugh, a step between two defenders. Couldn't get in, but then Lloyd took the shot that was blocked, but that's the most dangerous the U.S. has looked all night. And just a simple layoff from Morgan. The speed of Pugh that opened things up. Lloyd almost collected one after that run. And if he's got something. And it's on the U.S. again. Inside the box on Lloyd. And I, what I like about that is that Pugh was anticipating that simple slip ball by Alex Morgan. And then Lloyd is following up and gets her shot off. Good work by Flaherty coming back, among others, for England so that Pugh wasn't in alone. You're right, and we're saying it time and time again. It's getting numbers around the ball defensively for England that has largely disrupted the U.S.'s attack. Jill Scott. Forward for Duggan. Laid it off. Greenwood. It's going to be a USA throw-in. Mark Sampson said he wanted to disrupt the U.S. offense. They've done that and limit the U.S. in terms of their counterattacks. They've also done that. And more. Here's Pugh heading it towards herself. Had she been able to get by Bronze, she's in. And she almost did. She I'm is... going back to your points you were saying before. She's almost thinking faster than everyone else. She is because she's so good on the ball as well. She just spins it. She thinks she can head it over bronze and get on the other end of it. That's someone who knows her own pace. One minute added on here in stoppage time. Duggan slipped it forward to Scott. She was slowed down by Morgan Bryan. Klingenberg takes over. She's already back now on that left side. Harris back to the right. This is a better expansive shape from the U.S. and changing to the point. Hera towards the corner flag. Is there a moment of magic from the U.S. before the half comes to a close? Less than a half a minute to go. The referee holds true to one minute of stoppage. Horan, the cross. Pugh heading it down. It's loose. And wide. Well, if the U.S. was going to score in the first half, it would be fitting if it was Mallory Pugh. She has been the bright spot of this attack. But I like that Lindsay Rand is getting into the final third driving end line. She's so comfortable there because she used to be a front runner. And then Pugh, right idea to head that down, but she headed it down too much. Not enough pace. This might be the last kick 
of this first half. 31-year-old Karen Bartley puts it up there, and that's it. The first half has come to a close. No goals for either side, but the big surprise, Allie, has been the play of England. I think so. I, I didn't expect them to be able to maintain that level of pressure even within the first 45 minutes, not having been training. But more than that, their composure on their ball, on the ball, their sense of spinning out of pressure and combining with one another has impressed me as well. Time now to go downstairs. Jenny Taft is standing by with Megan Klingenberg. Well, Megan, England really came out pressing you guys hard from the very beginning of the game. What are your thoughts on the way the team responded in the first half? Well, we knew that England was going to come with the high pressure. That's what they're known for. We need to be a little bit more patient on the ball, make sure we find the open spaces, get to the other side of the field where the pressure isn't, and I think we'll be fine. All right, thanks for your time. Good luck in the second. Thank you, Jenny. No goals in this one. We saw some physical play, though, from these two teams going hard at it, looking for three points on the night. Scoreless at the half. This is your moment to start something better. Right now, take advantage of our limited time offers during the Hyundai Seize the Moment sales event. Hurry in and get 0% APR for up to 60 months, plus $1,000 event cash or $1,500 customer event cash on the 2016 Sonata. Three, two, one. The first endless apps of 2016 begins now. Kitchen, we are a go. 10 bucks still gets you endless rounds of the best appetizers on earth. Roger that. Endless apps are back at Fridays. Hey, TJ, staring contest, me and you, go. You're gonna flinch. Your eyes are hurting. You're about to break. <sighs> yeah, there it was. Do you even have eyes behind those? MLS Soccer Sunday, first on ESPN. Portland Timbers versus Columbus Crew. Then on FS1, Seattle Sounders versus Sporting KC. We're raising money for our pet rescue. We're raising awareness. I'm boosting spirits with t-shirts. Booster.com is the easy way for you or your group to raise money for any cause. Perfect for PTAs, charity walks, personal fundraisers, causes big and small by selling t-shirts and collecting donations online. Just design your t-shirt and drive everyone to your personalized booster page. We'll ship the orders and send you the money you raised. Visit booster.com and start your free campaign today. Welcome to the toughest challenge of your life. Four decorated heroes will train 16 civilians just like they were military. Let's go! Get down here now! John Cena hosts a team competition where you're only as strong as your weakest link. We would have been better off without you there. You give up. I'm going to stop this mess. You will be pushed. You go home. No, no, no! American Grit, April 14th on Fox. I am unstoppable. I'm not afraid to be me. I am full of possibility. Girls on the Run inspires girls to be joyful, healthy, and confident. Dedicated volunteer coaches help third to eighth grade girls embrace their strengths and celebrate what makes them unique. They team up for a community service project, then finish with a 5K. Thanks to our volunteers and partners, Girls on the Run can be a game changer for young girls. To learn more, log on to girlsontherun.org. About 19 feet now for Jordan. Four feet of break to his right. Jordan Speed! Two weeks in, two close finishes. Now the biggest names in NASCAR head to Vegas. The Cobalt 400, Sunday at 3 Eastern on Fox. Welcome back, everyone, to Tampa, Florida. It is scoreless at the half between the United States and England in the first game of this tournament for the U.S. We talked Mallory Pugh at the top. We're talking about her now because she's been the most effective player for the team. She has. If there was a question about whether or not she could perform against the top five teams, we're seeing it tonight. She's blowing by these players that are fast. And that 
just connecting, picking her head up and finding a teammate. And here, ready to take a player on one one She is confident, and she's been the bright spot of this U.S. attack all night long. Now, we're talking about Pew. We're not going to talk about one player for England because collectively, Allie, they've gotten the job done. What have you seen in the first half from England? They, they've they been really good. They've been high-pressing the U.S. And here, you just see they're pressuring and pressuring them. They cause a turnover, and that's how they get into the box. They're not doing a great job with their chances, but they're forcing turnovers. There's numbers around the ball. You can see Alex Morgan. She can't even get faced up there. And then they're also getting some opportunities on set pieces. This is one they decide to take short. But again, that's how they're finding their way into the box. The USA used the phrase problem solve, and they like to use it with the players that are on the field. Assuming that the same players start the next half, how can they problem solve this England strong collective defense? Well, the key is, is getting numbers to the ball so they can break that initial wave of pressure. They have to have options. And then once they break that wave, they've got to change the point of attack and get a big shape. They did it once or twice, but they have to do it repetitively over and over again. And, and they have to do it without fear of making a mistake because this is where they grow. This is where they take their game to the next level. We're just getting started here at halftime. It's the She Believes Cup Tournament live from Tampa, Florida. Scoreless at the half between the USA and England. Hey, kid, pal, friend, your rook, newbie. Hey, uh, you, number 20, number 3, 16. No one's going to know your name until you make them know it. Names are made here. The NASCAR Xfinity Series from Las Vegas, Saturday at 3.30 on FS1. I moved to Boston when I was two. There was 14 of us in a four-bedroom apartment. To be the first kid to buy a house, it's a very proud moment. Whatever home means to you, we'll help you find it. Zillow. For the last five days, 17 hours and 23 minutes, you've been a passenger. I Mazda's Sky Active technology makes it good to be a driver. I'm back where I belong. Coming soon from Progressive, it's Saving You, the new hit single from the Discounts. Safe driver, paperless, paid in full, multi car, and Joey Fato. We have auto tune, right? Oh, yeah. That's a hit! Yeah! Bleeding gums? You may think it's a result of brushing too hard. It's not. It's a sign of early gum disease, which you can help reverse by using Listerine. Added to your brushing routine, Listerine kills up to 99.9% .9 of germs and helps reverse early gum disease in just two weeks. Listerine, power to your mouth. Also try Listerine Floss. Its advanced technology removes more plaque. Introducing the 2016 Domino's DXP with a built-in warming oven. Did you guys order pizza? I did. Cards. Find out more about this first-of-its-kind vehicle at dominosdxp.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Tampa, Florida. We're at halftime. USA and England are scoreless. It's been a low-scoring tournament so far. Nothing in this one in the first game. All we saw was the one goal off of a corner kick from the Germans. 
They are precision on those set pieces. Meyer makes France pay. That's the only goal of that game. A 1-0 win for Germany. Gives them three points. So they are the early leaders in the standings. And if our game ends in a draw, then after today, Germany will be on top. Welcome back, everyone, to our coverage here on FS1 with Ali Wagner and JP Delacamera. Let's talk She Believes Cup tournament. You've got four of the top five teams in the world, so a great test for the U.S. It is, and, and Jill Ellis wanted it this way. This is an opportunity for her to learn about her team. Instead of going to Algarve Cup, where you don't necessarily get the best matches, they're doing it on U.S. soil. They're bringing the best teams in the world. And this is really where you learn about players, you learn about your team, and you learn where you're at now and where you need to be come the Olympics. And she wants to win this tournament, but she also wants to find out who's going to make the Olympic roster, right? You had 23 at the World Cup, only 18 at the Olympics. You're right. I mean, it'd be great to win the tournament, but that is really not their focus. It's about the process. It's about learning who should be on that roster. Who can play at this level? You have a lot of new players and not new faces, young players. What do they do with those nerves? Can they perform against physical teams, a physical team like England when you're Mallory Pugh and you're 17 years old? Those are questions that are being answered tonight and through the rest of the tournament. And again, this if I was a player, I'd be feasting over this. This is a dream. Well, you can watch the rest of these games because these games will be airing. The She Believes Cup March 6th and March 9th, USA versus France. 3 p.m. Eastern, that's in Nashville, Germany versus England. Then on the 9th, France, England, USA versus Germany. Come back with us. Plenty more still to come from Tampa, Florida. It's scoreless at the half. Oh. Let go and enjoy the bold margarita. Lime Marita. This is your moment. Seize it. Now during the Hyundai Seize the Moment sales event. Hurry in and lease the all-new 2017 Elantra for just $179 a month. Seize your moment at your Hyundai dealer today. One Crest 3D White smile is all it takes to turn the tables. Crest 3D White toothpaste removes five times more stains than the red box. For a smile like that, Crest 3D White is the way to whiten. Right now at Papa John's, get one of our best deals ever. For just $9.99, you can get any large pizza with up to five toppings. Pile on your favorites with up to five toppings for just $9.99. Better ingredients, better pizza. PapaJohns.com. Real Madrid hope to shut the door on Roma, and Chelsea fights to stay alive against Paris Saint-Germain. Next Tuesday and Wednesday at 2 Eastern on FS1. Since the birth of humanity, we have prayed. What is it that compels us to believe in something greater than ourselves? I want to understand this instinct which unites us all. Join me on an epic journey around the world through history and science to tell the story of God. It's going to be quite a ride. The Story of God with Morgan Freeman premieres Sunday, April 3rd at 9 on National Geographic. They're larger than life. Standing 12 feet tall. And there's nothing else like it. Monster Jam on FS1. Hold on to your seats as these legends of dirt unleash their power on legions of fans. Monster Jam. All season long on FS1. The Passion is the story of Christ in the last hours of his life, all through the streets of my hometown, New Orleans. How could I not be a part of something this special? I am playing Mary. I grew up in the Methodist Church, and so I'm honored to be asked. It's about putting out a positive message and a great story. It's something that's very human and very relatable. To be a part of one of the greatest stories ever told will be so powerful. The Passion, a live musical event, Sunday, March 20th on Fox. Saturday, a Big East doubleheader on Fox. Wow! Josh Hart leads number three Villanova against upset-minded Georgetown. Then, Trayvon Blewett and number five Xavier take on Creighton. It all starts Saturday at 11.30 Eastern and continues at 2.30 on Fox. Sponsored by the Jeep Renegade.
Welcome back, everyone. Mallory Pugh was one of the good talking points in the first half of play. Scoreless USA and England. We talked also, Ali, about the midfield pairing of Horan and Brian and their test. How do they do in the first 45? I, I give it about a six. I, you know, they haven't been on the ball enough. They're the ones that have to go seeking out that ball. They have to be the ones to get around it and solve pressure. I think they're in there for a reason, and it's to figure it out in this half. Jill Ellis will give them the start of this half and the rest of the team as will Mark Sampson as they go with the same starting 11 again you can make up to six subs in this game if you choose to final huddle there for England you would think they'd be talking about doing more of the same absolutely and, and no changes from either side you said it right thing in my opinion Ready for the second half. Tatiana Guzman will pull the whistle. We're underway. England in red, USA in white if you're just joining us. England very strong in the first 45 minutes. And you don't make changes if you're Samson because they are performing well. Bronze tries to slip it through. Scott try to go in line. Blocked by Klingenberg. Out of play, belongs to the United States. And for the U.S., you don't make changes because you want them to figure it out. England again, winning it away from the U.S. Horan picks it up. That's the ball they need. And get it out wide and quicker as England tries to scramble back defensively. Heath pushed to the outside. And that one gets away. Goal kick for Bardsley. It was the right idea by O'Hara and, and such a good run from Lloyd. That inside out run was on. As the left back Greenwood had pushed in, there was a little spit slip there for Carly Lloyd to find. Well, for sure, if the U.S. is going to win this game, Lloyd's got to be more involved. Morgan's got to be more involved because they didn't really get chances in that first half. You're right. And if they're involved, it means that they're solving pressure. It means that they're having enough time and on the ball to pick their heads up and pick them out. Over the top, speedy run there. Then it was lost. Taylor keeps that pressure on. As soon as she lost the ball, she did her best to try to win the ball back, and she does. And numbers join in, making it difficult for U.S. to get out. They'll be teammates with Portland this year in the NWSL. Here's Taylor's cross. It deflects, and Solo will take it. Let's go downstairs. Jenny Taft had a conversation with Jill Ellis at halftime. What'd she tell you, Jenny? Well, before I even had a chance to ask Jill a question, she came out talking to me about Morgan Bryan and Lindsey Horan. She said, you know, I got to see more from them. They need to be able to create space, create change, and play with more purpose. I also asked her if she was surprised by only one shot in the first half. She said it's a challenge because this is a teaching game. I want these new players to get the experience, but we can't forget the basics. We still need to take advantage of the transition and finish on our opportunities. Thank you, Jenny. So Jenny didn't even have to ask her the question. <laughs> down this left sideline for Morgan after Lloyd was taken down. The advantage call went in the USA's favor. Morgan, nice move inside. Took the look up. Try to find Q. It's blocked out towards Morgan Bryan. Morgan had that game-winning goal against England in February of 2015. Bryan looks, launches. Morgan in the air. Cleared away by England. Off Sauerbrunn. And the foul is given there. Free kick for the U.S. And that's earned just by that simple touch by Becky Sauerbrunn to connect. In years past, that would have been a ball that was played back in over the top. But Becky connects with Haran, and Haran uses her body, which she does so well, and spins her defender, earns that this opportunity right now for the U.S. Five in that wall for England. It's Heath and Bryan from about 30, maybe a little bit closer. 30 yards out. Tobin Heath will leave it. Bryan strikes. It goes through the wall, but it's an easy play for Bardsley.
as he will send it upfield. U.S. got a touch on that ball. Hugh picks it up. Played it off the defender. Williams comes back to Klingenberg. There's that England pressure, just like we saw in the first half. We said, how long could they do it? They might have surprised us that they went the first 45 without taking any of that pressure off, and now they're starting the second half the same way. I'd give it to maybe about the 60-minute mark, where sometimes you see those tired legs start to creep in. Stokes. We'll see if at that point, Sampson goes to the bench and maybe brings on fresh legs so he can keep that up, or if he changes the way they play. My guess would be he, he stays stays the course as long as it's being effective and just rolls in those six subs, take advantage of it. Unless, of course, he's using this to get players fit, but I don't deem that to be the, the situation. Greenwood, very active in the first half of play. Both sides of the ball. She'll take this from just over the halfway line. Long for Taylor. It looked like she fell back with Klingenberg on her. And now Klingenberg pressuring the ball, has some help. Three players for the U.S. Pugh is there, Bryant is there. Farrell Williams cut it off. Nice job, but then the U.S. takes over. And right back to Bronze. Scott and Klingenberg, good body position, so it's a USA throw -in. And it's given back to Bronze because Morgan Bryan is all alone. She has three English players closing in on her and no American player coming in at an angle to give her an option. Throw in for Klingenberg, near sideline. Zeros on the scoreboard, 52nd minute. USA, England. The She Believes Cup Tournament. Another foul going against England. Free kick for Megan Klingenberg, motioning the solo. She used solo as the album. Inside the circle for Lloyd, who tried to flick that on towards Morgan. England takes over instead. Nice idea. Sauerbrunn and Solo, though. Sauerbrunn had the angle, and Solo and Sauerbrunn were communicating. They have good chemistry. You know, having played together so many games now, that's just a perfect example of it. It's a nice ball. And then laid off. Brian from Horan. Almost stolen away by Duggan. Sarbrun to Sonnet. Sonnet pushing it to the outside. And the U.S. will try to get some numbers forward. You can see, though, how many players England already have back behind the ball. And they're closing very quickly. Hugh and Bronze in a battle, and it goes against the teenager. That's a tough one. They both had their arms kind of locked into each other. But oftentimes, the smart thing to do is go to the ground, and you get the call. Steph Houghton, all the way upfield, one in the air by Klingenberg. And Klingenberg touched it last, out for a throw in. Brahms played it into the middle. Nob sending it in, but that's too close to Solo. U.S. taking off with Bryan. In the space, Morgan runs on to it. Tough angle. Help is coming from England. That's stopped there by Barnsley. 
and that's where I want to see Alex Morgan realize help isn't coming, help is too far away because she is that fast. And spin out and then find a teammate because there was that's just a ball that you give to the opponent to head in the other direction with. That's what you were talking about in the first half and what Jill Ellis was saying, right? That final either pass, shot, or even decision. Exactly. That's one area in Alex Morgan's game that, that she can focus on and step up, and I think so it'll pay dividends come the Olympics. Jill Scott pushing it back. You see bronze. Two goals for her at the last World Cup. Got this ball forward. England played seven games in the World Cup. Every game decided by one goal. They won five of them. Pugh. That's bronze. They've had a good matchup all game long. Bronze versus Pugh. O'Hara up in the right. Try to play it to the feet of Heath. Houghton gave it away. The U.S. back on the ball. From distance. O'Hara tried to send it in. It skipped across. A couple of players reach. And will roll out. But that's in front of the back line of England, which makes it easy to defend. And just take a look at this. I keep talking about the simplicity of Becky Sauerbrunn. That's not simple. She pops it over defender and then connects that pass. I'm in awe of her. England will have the ball again. 56th minute. Still scoreless. Game one went to Germany when they executed that corner kick. Meyer with a goal, a 1-0 win over France. So Germany right now is on top of the standings. Four of the five best teams in the world. Ranking-wise, according to FIFA, with Japan being the exception, they're not here. Klingenberg. And that foul goes against the U.S. But you can see how slow England is being on their restarts. Catching their breath, just dictating the tempo. That's part of the reason they've been able to keep up their pressure. They've been smart in these dead ball situations. Organizing, taking their time, as you see everyone running up the pitch to get onto this first and second ball. Greenwood will take this. Greenwood curls it up there. It's one in the air. Cleared by Lindsey Horan. Stokes. Farrah Williams, their all-time cap leader, sending it long towards Jill Scott. Stays in play against O'Hara, and now it's lost out of play. The USA against England, zeros on the board. England's come a long way, it seems, from the last World Cup. For more on that, Jenny Taft. Well, JP, just being invited to play in this tournament really represents how far England has come. Jody Taylor said recently that, you know, if this tournament had come uh, a year earlier, a few people would have doubted us. They would have questioned why we we're in this place. But just to be invited really shows that the entire world represents how far we've come. But she also said, tactically and technically, the U.S. isn't better than us. Well, Mark Sampson's talking now about just tweaking things that he feels like they're competitive in all these games. Now they just want to tweak and get a little bit better at everything. Right. It, it, it's the attention to details that it puts out performances that are consistently able to compete with the top teams in the world. That's what he stresses to his group. Look out here. It could be a two-on-one. Duggan has help if she can cross that ball. Instead, she shot it. And Solo had the angle covered. And Jody Taylor not happy with that. Wide open. Not Wide open. happy with that decision at all. Duggan had a poor first touch, which didn't set her up for success. But she still had an opportunity to slip Taylor in. And we're going to get a good look at it. There's no cover. As Sauerbrunn goes to that ball, someone has to be covering from the U.S. And Jody Taylor, frustrated, just puts her hands on her knees. That touch right there by Duggan is what makes her decision a little bit more difficult. But I think she was shooting all, all day long. You've got to slip in your teammate in that situation. 
Unless, of course, you're Ronaldo or Messi in an upper beat near post. That's, that's different, yeah. England very much alive in this game. Toe-to-toe -to -toe with the U.S. Zeroes on the board. We're in the 60th minute. Lloyd puts it forward. Laid off, and then Lloyd went toward goal. Intended for Pugh, headed away. Klingenberg. Seven and white for the U.S. Pushing it forward. Try to find Lloyd. It's knocked out of play. England's ball. Are Lloyd and Morgan more active in the second half or no? I would say they're they're being found more. Things are opening up just a, a tad bit. But I don't think that their their work rate has changed. It's just that they're finding the ball a bit more. Heath. Back to the US. Pushed wide by Horan. Sauerbrunn finds Klingenberg. Past the hour mark. England giving the USA all they can handle and more. Scoreless here from Tampa. Horan drops it back. Sauerbrunn towards Sonnet. And Sonnet has been very steady out there. Good decisions defensively. But what she isn't doing is offensively pinging the ball to that opposite outside mid. There have been a couple opportunities where she get her head up and switch the point of attack. And sometimes that just comes with games and, and confidence to be able to hit that ball and fear of giving over a counterattack. Morgan Bryan. Short pass and then the return reception. That's how you solve pressure. That's what Jill Ellis wants from this group. All out of play. It belongs to England again. The U.S. is going to make a change. And we're told that England might be as well. It's Kristen Press who's up by the fourth official at the moment. Big delay here. They're not going to allow the sub right now. So Jill Ellis has given everyone past the hour mark. And now is going to make her first change when she gets the opportunity. Foul on Lloyd. So let's see who is press coming in for Lindsay Horan. So they've broken up that midfield partnership, but Press doesn't play in that same position, so I wonder what comes next. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how they adapt. I would think Lloyd drops into that center of midfield with Brian, and Press goes into a, a more attacking role, and it looks to be just the case at first glance. Well, Press will give some instructions that she just got from the bench. And Press talked about being a spark if she's going to, in fact, be a substitute. So we'll see if she can bring that energy. So Press up top with Morgan, looks like. Here is Duggan. Force back. Q. Touch for Lloyd. Up for Kristen Press. Right number 12 for the U.S. Just coming on. Down that left side to Morgan. Knocked out. USA throw in. Get it in quickly. And they had press open. And Jilly Flaherty's done a very, very nice job on Alex Morgan. She's tracking her well. Here's the U.S. trying to get numbers forward against England. That's blocked. Oh, oh. And flag was up. England did have numbers back though to defend and they look like they want to make a change as well. Izzy Christensen, one of four newcomers to this team, getting ready to make just her sixth international appearance. And that might be just a case of like for like and just getting some fresh legs into the game. It appears that way. And Greenwood had a strong game. 
perhaps she's still got a little bit of a knock from the first half when she tangled up with, with Alex Morgan. But look, you can see a little bit of, of gamesmanship as she walks off now, buys a little time for a team. That's absolutely intentional. So Christensen in, she plays for Manchester City. And she too coming on with some instruction for some, for some players from Mark Sampson. Free kick for England deep in their own half. Made up by Stokes. USA's ball on the throw in far sideline. 65th minute now. With zero still on the board. The ball belongs to England. Stokes will take this. Trying to get out of that pressure. Lloyd's touch. Wide for Klingenberg. Lloyd. Sauerbrunn for the U.S. The USA will take on France on Sunday. Germany next Wednesday. The next game's for them in the She Believes Cup tournament. Tennis to Lloyd or press, she couldn't get to that. Press is taking up Lloyd's spot right now with Lloyd dropping back. It's more of an attacking central midfielder. And I think Jill Ellis is looking for Lloyd to get on the ball more and to start dictating tempo, which was something that Brian Rand was struggling with. Crystal Dunlop by the fourth official. So she will be the next USA change. This game might be tailor-made for her to come in with her speed. And her ability to hold off players and spin them. Referee's gonna allow the change. How would you assess Mallory Pugh's performance tonight? I think she did well for herself, very well for herself. She proved that she can play against the top teams in the world. There wasn't a lot of production from her, but she was the bright spot in their attack in that first half. We didn't see much of her in the second half, but I like how active she is. I like her confidence on the ball. Into the box. U.S. looking to get that. Done. Brings those fresh legs and some confidence into the game as well. Golden Boot winner in the last tournament. Five goals in one game against Puerto Rico. So... This could be a great role for her. I know she wants to start, but coming off the bench and being a spark could well, be huge. She can do either. Of course she wants to start, you're right, but if you're coming in and providing that spark, that's something that Crystal Dunn has within her because she's got the confidence that if she doesn't start, she knows she can still make a difference. Physical play continues. Next week, we're going to go home in the UEFA Champions League round of 16. Tuesday, Ronaldo and Real Madrid try to finish off Roma. Then on Wednesday, Chelsea look for a comeback against Latan and Paris Saint-Germain. It's all on FS1, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. And when you look at Dunn, part of her... One of her assets, at least, is being like a power forward, someone that can run at a physical team and, and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. That's, not, that's in one area that she's different from Pew. She's a bit stronger, a bit more physical. And we're looking for some room here, and they find it. Long shot from Williams is blocked by Klingenberg. That's a good block for the corner because that's within Williams' range. <laughs> You're exactly right. There's certain players, when you're heading into a game, there's certain players you know that you need to close outside the 18 if they're looking like they're going to wind up. She's one of them. Incredible story about Farrell Williams. Homeless for seven-plus years. Hid that 
from her teammates. She's really turned her life around now. And helps the homeless as well. Back home. Corner kick for England. Zeroes on the board. Duggan sends it across. It falls in the box. England will recover. Referee's going to get out of the way. Almost got in the way of that. And Stokes just moved it away so that the U.S. couldn't come back on that counter. It's a goal kick for Solo. Anytime that ball bounces in the box, it can be dangerous. And England's typically very strong on set pieces. Right now, with neither team really getting much in that final third, you'd think a set piece may set one apart from the other. Scott was after the ball. It's going to be cleared out of play. It still belongs to England in the 70th minute. They'll take on Germany next. Team they beat in the third place game, which surprised a lot of people in Canada. That long throw in. The flick from Taylor. Straight up it goes. Hobbs almost ran into a teammate. U.S. wants to counter, but that would have been one against four. You're exactly right, and the trailing players were very far back, so that isn't a good counter opportunity. They've got to be more patient, get numbers around the ball, allow time for players to get forward. Lloyd finds Heath. Now they've got some numbers going forward. Press in the box, cutting, stopping. That's blocked. Klingenberg towards Dunn. Klingenberg holding there. Waits for some movement around her. Dunn spun away, looking, shooting! Dunn with a goal! Well done by Crystal, one of the U.S. for the shot. You're right, and she had acres of space when she spun that defender. There's not much you could do. She's She's got such a low center of gravity. She's so quick. It's very hard to defend that. You can't blame the English defense for that, and there's nothing Bardsley can do. That ball was finding the back of the net as soon as it left her foot. Terrific shot. She scored a lot of goals in the NWSL last year, the leading goal scorer in the league. Not all as spectacular as that one. But she had a few great ones for sure. See if the game opens up now with press. Running at the England defense. Last touch failure, and now it's taken away. For Crystal Dunn, not just her 11th goal, 11th in the last 12 games. Well, that's what happens when you play a lot in CONCACAF qualifying <laughs> against opponents that aren't as tough. But five goals in one game is remarkable regardless. And, and that statement piece by Crystal Dunn how do you like that if you're Jill Ellis? Look at that laser just come off her foot so hot. And you can see she's pumped up about that. I would tell you this, Jill Ellis watching this game will take more out of that goal than the five she scored against Puerto Rico. You, One against five. You're 100% correct. Because this is the quality of the opponent. This was a difficult game to break down. She's the difference in a game now. And after what, just five minutes or so? Yeah. And you, you alluded to it, this game now could open up. I've seen England, they're still being very disciplined defensively and tracking back, but this is when your legs feel a bit heavier because now you're down one nothing. You may become a little bit, lose a little bit of belief. Solo back with it. The head of Knobs. 
Pushed back the other way, and now it's Stokes for England. Still a tight one here. Not over for a long one. Only in the 74th minute. Dobbs with it. Stokes. Nice move for her. Pushing forward. Ball cut towards Scott. Good active move there. Tallest player in the field spun away from that traffic well. Earned a corner. She's deceptively crafty on the ball. She made that move, but her teammates really were not anticipating that she'd get that cross off. Corner kick is Eve Christensen for England. 75th minute USA with a one-goal lead. In the box. Played wide. Dug it after it. That ball was out. Goal kick for the U.S. and Hope Solo. Just one goal separating these two teams. Crystal Dunn in the 72nd minute for 11th international goal. So Crystal Dunn is the player we're talking about right now to add more to her story, Jenny Tapp. Well, JP, Crystal Dunn's journey back to this team is really a remarkable one, and I've had some time to chat with her about it, and she said the biggest difference after being cut and now coming back was just her confidence, and she used the word a nutcase. She said before, I was always worried, always questioning what the coaches thought of me and just not enjoying the game. I left the team. I reevaluated. I became confident again, and I learned how to play with joy, and that is showing through, guys. And that's maturity, Jen, for somebody that's only 23, right, Al? Oh, definitely. Getting confidence and keeping confidence are probably the biggest components to success at this level. That's what separates the players who have talent and can't quite pull it off. And here's a look from England. A nice ball in by Lucy Bronze, but good marking initially by Sauerbrunn. But that's a little bit of lazy defending on that second defender. It should be tucking in on that English player. You need to be touch tight in the box. Karen Carney's coming into the game, replacing Farrell Williams. So some experience leaves and some experience comes in. And that's a surprise that Karen Carney didn't start for me. She's one of those players who can set the tone and really break a team apart for England. The youngest player to reach 100 caps, now fourth most cap player. And now they've got Fran Kirby, who can be a difference maker. They're going to need a goal to at least get a point out of this. And Kirby is the one that's going to come in. Kirby's a young, exciting player. She has tremendous talent for being so young. And she doesn't look like she's going to be the fastest player out there, but she's deceptive enough to separate herself and play make out of that forward role. She's not someone that likes to run in behind, but more so get the ball at her feet. So the fresh legs of Kirby come in. She had one goal at the World Cup, one of the seven players that now play for Chelsea. She had a stick with Redding. Lloyd. Brian, good job. Even better. That's just pretty. Lingenberg looking for it. Well, before we talked about how does the U.S. problem solve and get a goal, now they've got that. So how do they close this game out, Allie? They still have plenty of time left. I don't think the focus will necessarily be on closing out the game as opposed to pushing for another. You know, this isn't a time really to work on end-of-the-match tactics. This is a time to grow as a group collectively and individually. And I see them just more of the same. Try to figure out how to play out of this pressure. Julie Johnston and Ali Krieger appear to be the next USA subs. Get the warm-ups off by the bench. Solo will put it back into play. 79th minute, Crystal Dunn's goal, the difference in this game. circle one header by Lloyd towards press and now it's done after it 
Jill Scott away from pressure. Launched by Houghton. Long run for Carney, even with those fresh legs, couldn't catch up to it. So up by the fourth official now, we will see the changes. Krieger and Johnston will be coming in. O'Hara is going to be coming out. And with O'Hare coming in, or coming out, excuse me, for Krieger, the biggest thing that Ellis has wanted to see out of Krieger is, is more connection in the final third. She wants her defenders to be able to get in the attack and combine and keep possession. And that's a challenge for Krieger. That's something that she has to improve upon if she wants to get back into the starting lineup. Yeah, those two players appear to be competing for the starting right back spot. And what a gift that is if those two players are competing for that spot because they are both so talented. But Kelly O'Hara transitioning from forward into that back line is just more comfortable in that attacking third than Krieger is going to be. So another formation change for the U.S. because Morgan is coming out as a forward and Julie Johnston came in for her. So we'll see if Lloyd doesn't move closer to the top now with press or how they'll reconfigure. Well, at first glance, it almost looks like a five-back situation. Could but maybe, be? maybe Sauerbrunn steps into the center of midfield as a defensive mid. U.S. wins the ball. Waiting for some help, Morgan Bryant. Good patience. Let's try to deliver that ball for Crystal Dunn. And instead, England takes it over. 81st minute. Well, defensively, they have five players all on the back line for the U.S. My guess is they release their outside backs in the attack, create a more fluid looking formation than what you would think is a stagnant. Looks for the long ball. Klingenberg back on it for the U.S. Trying to find press. Help is coming. England takes over, though. Nice ball. Bronze from Scott. You see Bronze waiting for the assistant referee, and she says corner. Eighty-second minute. Crystal Dunn with the game's only goal in the 72nd USA with a slim lead over England. Second corner for Christensen. Solo comes out. Got that one in traffic. Looking for her 145th win and 96th career shutout. The fair result at this point in the game would be 0 0 for both these sides. But you just had one player, Crystal Dunn, step up with a little bit of magic. And that's what separates these two. One moment of brilliance. Bardsley way out of goal. We'll send that one forward. Scott. Stokes. Krieger's back there, has some help. Johnson's over there as well. Ball is launched out of play. The U.S. hasn't given England much in terms of shots taken or, or quality shots. They've given up a lot of possession, maybe more than they normally do. But England hasn't looked dangerous in the attacking third. Their best chance may have been when the ball should have been played across to Jordan Taylor, and it wasn't. Oh, well, you're right. They, both teams have been a bit lackluster in the final third. And sometimes when you haven't been together, more than two weeks as England hasn't. That's a piece that will that will be the last to come. It, it, it's hard to put those final pieces together in that attacking third. We see bronze with a throw in. No room there in the sideline. Lloyd cut her off. This ball falls nicely to the speedy Kirby. 
but away from her. Throw in England. But I don't think you can take credit away from the U.S.'s back line and their discipline as well. We've been touting England's discipline while the U.S. is just as disciplined. It's just that we expect that from the U.S. Get ready for long throw in from Bronze looking into the box. Double header. And then cleared away by the U.S. Not out of danger. Stokes looks for it against Dunn. Dunn stays with it, kept it in front of her. Tackled away. Stokes is over there on the side. Knocked forward by Krieger. England recovers. Knobs doesn't see anything forward. We'll go to the side instead. How to Bronze. Out of play. Kirby's after it, under pressure. Heath. And Mark Sampson said it was his ball, but it's not. Belongs to the U.S. It's a great effort, though, by his team. Really great effort all night. I think they they can definitely be proud of this performance. And another notch in their belt to build confidence off of. They're in the midst of Euro 2017 qualifying. And that'll be the next focus when this tournament is over. And they're in the midst of, of growing their sport back home. They've had some changeovers in their FA with a new CEO, new appointments, and their commitment is to winning. And that's for both the men, the women, and the youth programs. Bronze is going to at least be spoken to. Free kick for the United States. 86th minute, a one nothing lead on a goal by Crystal Dunn. You can see why it was a smart decision to give Samson an extension on his contract for another two years through the next World Cup. Free kick for Morgan Bryan from the near sideline. Short to keep possession of Klingenberg. Bryan slots it through for Heath. Trying to manage the clock now. Lost out. Belongs to England. They want to keep that ball down there a lot longer than that. And so they are playing to close this out. Going to the corners. Simple end of the match tactics. As a player, I hated these moments. <laughs> You wanted to go for it. Here's Press trying to find Lloyd. Is that what you're saying? I am absolutely yeah. saying that. It is not fun playing into the corners. And typically, I feel as though, as though it works against you. Players relax a bit. They're not in the best shape. I, I just, I never liked it as a player. England wants to make another change. And bring in Aluko. For Duggan. Aluko has been interesting in that she had 13 goals in World Cup qualifying. She's never scored in the World Cup in three appearances. A lot of talent. Well, perhaps that's that confidence I speak of when you can compete at the highest level. She never really has great games in big matches against top opponents. And you just got to wonder if she has a bit of doubt that creeped in at some point and she hasn't been able to shake it. Teams have each made four changes. Knops pushing it ahead. Carney has plenty of room and some time as well as the U.S. chases in the 89th minute. Karen Carney took it into a crowded area. Done with some help from Heath, and the U.S. takes over. Krieger on the right. Slowing things down. Keeping possession for the U.S. Bryant. Pushing it back to the outside. I am so shocked 
at how fit England is. Typically, the U.S. dominates 60 minutes past. Looking for that second goal. Wide of a diving Bardsley. Usually, the, the U.S. will dominate in those waning 30 minutes. But not today. England has been fresh all night long. And look at that by Kristen Press. I like the little seam she's in. She turns her defender. There's a little bit too much room by Flaherty. And that bending ball searching for that far post goes a bit wide. Lloyd battle for that ball in the air. We're almost at the 90-minute mark. See about stoppage time as Bronze keeps it on the ground for Aluko. For a throw in for Bronze into Aluko. Christensen intercepted by Dunn, pushed off the ball. It's an easy one to call. Free kick US. That foul got all the fans in there off their seats in the stands. US has Whitney Engen up by the fourth official. If they can make that change, see how much stoppage time is left because we've just hit 90. And that just eat away at the clock. Langan's not going to get much playing time. So she's going to come in for Megan Klingenberg. They still haven't posted stoppage time. Now it's up to three minutes. So that's how much Whitney Engen will get to play. She, like Heather O'Reilly, recalled to this team. The fact that they were not in the Olympic qualifying roster did not mean that they were necessarily out of the Olympics. No, it doesn't. It, you know, it was just an opportunity for Coach Ellis to look at some other players. She knows what she has in both those players. They're both veterans. Engen was around all last year. O'Reilly's been around for many years. So it was an opportunity for Ellis to look at some other players. Um, setting it wide, Karen Carney. Going to the inside, kept it on the ground, it's deflected. Kirby looks into the box, Kirby. Double team there. Fran Kirby trying to make something happen for Carney, but it's picked off. U.S. tried to go forward, no foul was given there, and England takes over. Couldn't find DeLuco. From distance, not going to be hope solo from there. No, that was good defending initially by the U.S. to delay Fran Kirby, hold her up. But I don't understand when a coach is yelling at England to shoot from those places that far out. You're right. They're never going to beat Hope Solo. I can't say never, but 99 out of 100 times, they are not going to beat Hope Solo from that spot. Carney to the left. See of red on the attack. England look for an equalizer. U.S. nodded it out for a corner kick. Final minute here. The referee holds two to three minutes of stoppage time. Carney's ready for this corner. In swinger right to the middle. And there was some contact in the box. That was probably England's last chance. The U.S. should be able to kill this off. Hope Solo plays for the Seattle Reign in the NWSL. Their season starts again in April. Over the top, Aluko trying to split two defenders. Knocked away once, still loose. Bronze got it forward, Aluko can't find it. He's trying to get one final chance at goal. No whistle yet. Not a down by Kirby. U.S. blasting it away. Press. Sent forward by Engen. Trying to find the legs of Dunn. That's going to do it. Game over. This was not easy at all, but the U.S. gets a one to nothing win over England. This told Jill Ellis a lot about her side. They still have room to improve.
leaps and bounds in the ability to play out of that pressure, to possess the ball, to be patient in the attack. It didn't look great all day long, but the substitution of Dunn getting in there shows you the depth this U.S. team has when she single-handedly changes the game, puts U.S. up 1-0. England has to be proud of their performance. Coming off the bench, Crystal Dunn scores in the 72nd minute. It's her 11th goal internationally, and they've all come in the last 12 games. Let's go downstairs now. Jenny Taft is standing by with USA head coach Jill Ellis. Jill, you said all along that tonight's game, this entire tournament, was about teaching and about evaluating. So what did you take away from tonight's match? Well, I think we you know, we needed to be a bit more purposeful in the first half. Um, but, you know, I think the players that came in made a difference. Um, you know, I think in these games, it's going to be tight. We know that. So I think more about the experience of playing these top teams. That's a huge takeaway from this game. Uh, and certainly some things to work on, for sure. A lot of new faces as well. Who impressed you tonight? Well, I think all the players that came in, I thought, made a difference. We call them our game changers, and they did. Um, you know, I think Sonic did a great job there. I mean, that's uh, England pumps the ball, and they give us a lot to deal with behind our back line, and I thought she did exceptionally well. And obviously, Dunny coming in and scoring a world-class goal was fantastic. And, of course, tonight, this team, this team came out pressing you. You're going to be facing France. You might see the same thing. How nice is it, though, to come out and play really tough opponents? It is. I mean, England's five in the world. Uh, they're, you know, bronze medalists at the World Cup. So you can't take that away. And, and this is exactly what we need is these tight games. Um, and they're a very physical team. And, you know, I think tonight we took a few knocks, but we'll, we'll come through it. Thanks for your time, Joe. USA with a one to nothing win over England thanks to this moment of magic from Crystal Dunn. Her 11th international goal, US wins. We'll be back.